so I wanted to present a case study that I did looking at uh, a local business that had no presence. And so I'm going to talk to you about that today. Uh, to start, you can download slides at that URL. Um, so if you want to just take a moment. So when we do SEO, we typically take a client that already has some kind of online presence and we try to make it better. And then we, we do a whole bunch of things for that business and we typically see rankings go up. But it's hard to keep things in a silo. It's hard to know, well, was it the links that we built? Was it the content we added? Well, in local search, was it the reviews? Was it the citations? What are the things that really had the impact uh, to get me ranking? And so in this case study, I really wanted to step through all of these things one by one. So I was looking for a business that had absolutely zero presence. So I went to uh, Twitter and I asked. And uh, so I asked a bunch of people to fill out this form. We got about like 113 people had submitted the form. And uh, every one of them already had a Google listing or they had a Facebook page or they had a website. You know, so none of them were a clean slate. I was really looking for this like absolutely no online presence whatsoever. So fortunately, I remembered that uh, we have some friends. They have this uh, custom home building company called FC Development. And so uh, I decided I'll work with them because we've always talked about helping them with this. So I gave them a call. We, uh, I gathered all the information I needed to uh, collect content and information I needed for their citation building. Uh, I did some keyword research in local. Uh, typically, I would say you can't get search volume. Uh, but that has changed as of today. So typically, I just like to gather the main head terms, what are the obvious terms that you can think of, and then I combine them with things like modifier. So modifier would be like the city, you know, custom home builders, that kind of stuff, and then I'll use this little tool to combine them. So I did this basic keyword research. Uh, next thing was to set up a Google listing for them. So. Uh, we created the Google listing. So you'll notice the name there, FC Developments Custom Home Builder. Uh, so a keyword in the business name is one of the primary ranking factors in local search. It's been proven time and time again. At, get a keyword in there. It really helps. It can also get your listing suspended. So in this case, I had this great opportunity to actually get them to change their business name. So we, we, I wanted that keyword in there because I knew it would help with the ranking. So uh, we got their business name properly changed. That's who they are now, FC Development's Custom Home Builder. Um, so then we optimized the Google listing. Um, and that's mostly just categories. In GMB, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do in there. But the only thing that really impacts rankings beyond the business title is the category. So the primary category is super key. So I chose the obvious one, custom home builder. And then I added additional categories. Uh, home builder was the only one that was relevant. Um, all the other stuff, like you can have a description, you can have services, none of that really contributes to rankings. Um, but it really does contribute to conversions. So you want it, people engaged with your listing. You want your listing to look great. And so you still want to do all that stuff but no one's really shown uh, ranking boosts from all those other fields. So in terms of actual optimization, it's mostly just the category field. So I wanted to give them a website. So I went with the most basic version. In Google My Business, you can actually add a website. So uh, they have this little website builder, um, and it's pretty decent, actually. So I, I went in there, I made a website. It looks fine, so it's not bad for any small business. It, uh, it's simple and easy to use, so any business owner can get in there and make a website pretty easy. Um, it also can feed content directly into the Knowledge Graph. I'll put a question mark there because it's just all theory. I don't know. But when you think about it, you're, you're saving your website directly into Google's database, so I don't know, maybe. I um, have no idea if that actually is a thing. Um, but another thing I really like about it is that every time you post a new Google post to GMB or you get a review, it automatically shows up on your GMB page. And so it makes me wonder, even if you do have a website, maybe it's a good idea to uh, build out your GMB page, even if you don't even turn it on. You just still put your content there. So fill out that content and uh, you know, maybe it'll help contribute to relevancy signals. 
Um, so before I started building citations, I thought, ah, well, I can't use that URL. So Google gives you this really terrible URL. I didn't want to spread that all over the internet. So right within GMB, you can buy a domain. So I bought them a domain, and uh, they're fcdevelopments.ca, and then that just instantly connected with the GMB uh, listing. So that was nice. Next thing I did is uh, I set up rank tracking. So I, I wanted to check their rankings, and look at that. I created their listing, and they're ranking number one. It was that easy. So uh, now just some caveats. That's a, the, uh, it's a really long tail keyword. It was the home builders in Glenora, Edmonton, which is pretty obscure. And then I also just live a couple blocks away from them. And so proximity in local search is a huge factor. And so since I was close to them, it was long tail. Google was like, oh, here's a relevant business that's close to you. To get a better sense of rankings, you really want to see how do you rank around the whole city. And so it's really important when you're tracking local ranking campaigns that you check from a number of different spots. And so what I did is I just kind of mapped out these different areas. Uh, I got the zip codes for all those different spots around the city. And then I set them up in our uh, WhiteSpark local rank tracking software. So each uh, location there, and you can actually see that's all the same keyword, but they're all ranking uh, at different locations around the different areas that I'm tracking. All right, so the next thing to do is uh, citation building. Let's have a look at citation building. Uh, I had our citation building team build out uh, 100 citations. Um, and here's an interesting tip for you. Use a different phone number for citations than you use for your GMB and your website. And so I know a lot of you are thinking, well, uh, what about nap consistency? Isn't, isn't that a thing? So you can get around that by adding it as an additional number in Google My Business. So the primary number on the listing is the actual number for the business, but then there's those two additional fields in GMB, so you can add it as a secondary number. And then all of your mentions around the web, all your citations will still be connected to your Google listing. And so this was beneficial because their primary number was Owen's cell phone, and I didn't want his cell phone ringing off the hook with all the sales calls from all the directory sites. So uh, out of, I checked this because I used CallRail to get that second number. And out of 18 calls, they were all salespeople. So no harm done. No one actually is going to myhuckleberry.com and calling this business. So it's not a problem. OK, so one month later, uh, did the citations have any impact on rankings? I sort of let that run for a bit. Oh, tiny little uptick at the end. Citations are more of a foundational ranking factor. So it's the kind of thing that I don't expect to see huge rankings from citations alone. but. If you don't have them, then you don't really have that foundation you need to be able to rank, so it's kind of the thing you gotta do anyways. All right, more content. I, I, we just had a small paragraph on their GMB webpage, so I added a little bit more content. I wanted to see what impact that would have, so I just added this whole thing about uh, the process, how they build homes, pretty small, a little bit, bit of content. But after adding that, the next day, rankings in organic started showing up. They did have some um, local finder and local pack rankings already, but we started to see our first organic ranking show up with a little bit more content. Um, I wanted to see the impact of getting more citations in front of Google. So basically, you know, you gotta wonder, are the citations providing any value if Google doesn't know about them, if they're not indexed in Google? And so what you wanna do is you want to make sure that Google has all of these listings in the index. So I went to the, site, the GMB webpage and I added a whole list of all of the citation sites with links. So I, I made all these links to the citation site. This is typically the way that you get more citations indexed. So I did that and then I used this uh, Green Lane uh, SEO Google indexation tester. So Bill Sebald and his team built this thing. It's really awesome, but it, apparently, I looked at it today, it doesn't work anymore. Google changed something. So this was cool for checking indexation, but you can't use it anymore. But it worked while I was doing the study. So I did this study, and this is a little much to read, but every day I would check the, the citation indexation. You'll see that it basically hovers around 20 to 14 to 20 every day. It changes a little bit each day. And so there was no real change um, with the citation indexation after creating that GMB page. You know, and the results were always a little bit different, so I didn't know what was going on with the indexation testing. And then I thought, well, 
Of course, this page on GMB is not helping with citation indexation because the page has no authority to pass to those citations. So uh, I went looking around. I was like, oh, okay, well, what are some other ways to index citations? And I found this post by Matthew Woodward about indexing backlinks with a backlink indexer. So in this post, he recommends this service, which is uh, the one hour index, the only guaranteed indexing service. So I thought, oh, great, I'm gonna try this. So try it out. That also did nothing, but Matthew Woodward got some sweet affiliate bucks. So that was good. Uh, okay, so let's, I had this idea. I, was like, I know what the problem is. I just need a higher authority domain to link to. So I put all of the domains, uh, or all of the citations on a page on whitespark.ca. That's my website. It has more authority. So I started with that, and then the next, oh, then I uh, submitted it to Search Console. So I want this page to actually uh, get Google's attention, and the next day, boom, doubled the indexation rate. So it works. That actually is a way to get more citations indexed. Out of the like 70 something, 72, only 15 were not indexed, so they were just on really lower quality sites that Google still would not index. And it seemed to help too. Rankings actually went up the next day. So we had a little spike. We, we st started to see rankings increase, and they continued to increase, but you know, sort of at the end of March, early April, we started getting other signals coming into play as well. All right, a lot of people ask the question, because Google has this thing where you can add service areas in Google My Business, where you know, you say, okay, my business actually services zip, this zip code and this one and this one and this one, and they're like, okay, well, if I can specify that in Google, does it help me rank? So I wanted to take this opportunity to test it. So every uh, postal code that I was tracking in Google My Business, I also set that up in, uh, in, well, everything I was tracking in my rank tracker, I set it up in Google My Business, and I wanted to see what kind of impact it had. So maybe a little impact, but there were so many other things happening that I wasn't sure if maybe uh, that was it. So I thought, well, to be sure, if I take them out and then rankings drop, then I'll know, okay, service areas do impact rankings. So I took them all out, I brought it back down to just Edmonton, and rankings were not impacted by removal. This kind of confirms the general consensus in the local search community that the service areas do not impact uh, rankings. So if you're wondering that question, some answer there. So Google Posts, I wanted to see if I could see anything from Google Posts. Uh, we started pumping them out daily, uh, adding fresh posts to the, uh, to the listing. Rankings maybe responded a bit. It was hard to say. Um, if they did, I really think that it's more about engagement signals, and it's also about that content from the post getting put on the web page. I don't think that the posts themselves are driving rankings, and if, if they were, it was so minor, it was really little. How about reviews? Reviews are really well known to impact rankings in local search. Everyone pretty much agrees about that, that you get more reviews, you rank a little bit better. So I sent an email out to the business owners, and I said, Okay, here's a nice template you can use. Email all your past customers and get them to leave your review. So we started getting reviews. We got our first one, uh, like, next day. We got a couple more. It was great. We got these reviews. Any impact on ranking? Yes. So it actually, we did see rankings start to increase uh, after those reviews came in. So that was great. Confirmed expectations there. How about links? Links are always good. Uh, we think that links have a pretty significant impact on local search rankings. I don't know if you've ever seen this, this sort of tweet thread that this guy did, this Grindstone SEO, but basically he did a case study. He looked at a bunch of sites that were ranking in like casino, payday loans, et cetera, and he really did a deep dive on their links. He wanted to see what were the, the sort of, the fact, the elements of those links that were really helping them rank. And so it came down to this concept of high authority domain relevant links. So you would get these links from sites that are high authority and relevant to your domain. So if you're a lawyer, you get a site from like the best legal blog in the industry, right? So that, that's a big deal, getting those links. And then he also found that they never messed around with keyword anchors. So the sites that were really killing it had no keyword anchor text, they were all branded anchors. So that's, that's what he sort of discovered. So I, I took this as my link building philosophy for this case study. And I contacted this company, Outreach Pete. Outreach Pete. They, uh, 
They basically just email bloggers and say, hey, we got a cool resource or a cool site, will you link to it? And so they do that. <coughs> And they managed to get us some links, so on pretty good sites. So this one was um, like an environmental home building site. We got a branded link there. We got one from uh, this, uh, another home related site, architecture site, another architecture site. So we got these pretty solid links that were, were pretty good. And then I also was able to give them a link. I sort of, I gave them a sneaky link. I told, I, I said that they gave me a testimonial on our WhiteSpark local citation finder uh, page. That page has pretty, pretty good authority, so I got them a link there too. So I got these four links, and this, this is pretty exciting. Look what happened to their rankings. Wow. Just like, it totally doubled all of their rankings. We saw it lift ma amazingly overnight. So of course, like any SEO, my instinct is, Let's get more links. I want as many links as possible. I'm gonna go crazy. And so I started, I reached out to Pete again, and I was like, hey Pete, this is awesome. Let's get some more links. So he got me 12 new links, uh, six from industry-specific sites, and six from uh, city-specific sites. So they're actually like Edmonton blogs and that kind of stuff. So they're great links. No impact. These are all the links that I got. On, like day by day, and we're not seeing that same kind of impact on rankings. So this, this slide ended on June 21st. Even up until July 5th, still nothing. The links did not have an impact. So like, what the heck? Why were those first four so exciting? My theory here is the law of diminishing returns. And so you get those first few links um, because you had nothing before. So this brand had zero links before, and then you know, once I get to like four or five links, I've kind of reached parity with the rest of my competition on this, you know, this is a small industry, it's custom home builders in Edmonton, which is a city of about a million people. And so I've reached this parity level, and so getting more links isn't gonna help push me into the stratosphere of rankings. I'm already, I'm already on par with them. So this is my theory about what happened there. And so I just think, you know, we didn't need more links. We needed to diversify and improve in some other areas of the business. And so the, the big one that was a gap, of course, was we had this pretty lame one-page GMP website. So we're gonna build them a brand new website. So we did this, uh, it looked pretty good. We built them a nice spanky website. And uh, this is a good website. It's got everything you need on a website, lots of content. Uh, lots of internal linking. I was able to optimize the title tag. You can't really do that with the GMB website. Uh, we have like pages for every specific neighborhood that they build in. We have uh, home profiles for all the houses. And so it's just, this is a, a solid website uh, that's pretty well optimized for local search. So I went to Google and uh, Google Search Console. I re-indexed it via Search Console. So I did the re-indexing. And then uh, look at that had a little bit of an impact. Google was pretty happy with our new site. And so uh, we, we saw some rankings go up. So this was July 11th when I took this last uh, screenshot for my slides. And uh, yeah, we're seeing some positive improvements. All right, so let's look at some of the, uh, you know, things that you can learn from this, things that I learned along the way. Um, first is that local rank tracking thing. If you're just tracking from the city center, you really gotta fix that. You've gotta be tracking from multiple places if you're tracking locally and get a sense of where you rank around the whole city. Um, to get the full value from your citations, uh, take the time and effort to try and get them indexed. You can use a technique I showed in uh, the slides here. Uh, that will really have a, a better impact than a whole bunch of mentions out there that Google doesn't know about. Uh, the service area section in GMB will not help you rank in the area. The only thing that thing does is it, when you do a branded search, it shows a little map of your business and it outlines the area. It's for display purposes only. So that's not gonna help you rank. Um, you should invest in a Google review strategy. They definitely have an impact. If you're not focused on reviews, uh, you really should be. Whoa, those first few links really had an impact. It's important, I think, to sort of understand your competition figure out what the baseline is and make sure you have met that. That'll sort of break you into uh, ranking alongside them. Any individual strategy will probably hit a point of diminishing returns. We certainly see this with citations. So, you know, you've, you've got the, the core 60 citations. 
Building 100 more is probably not gonna move the needle. I witnessed it with links in this specific case study. We see it with reviews. You know, let's say you look at the results and most of the reviews, most of the competition has maybe 30, 40 reviews and you have 60 reviews. Great, you're already winning at reviews. You get 100 more reviews, they're probably not gonna push your rankings uh, beyond. Um, a full website, of course, is better than a single page GMB website, that's obvious. And overall, I just, it's not one specific activity, it's the aggregate of all of these activities that uh, will move the needle. So that's sort of the results of my case study. Uh, I learned a little bit on this, I hope it was helpful for you too. That's it. Thank you.